Oh yes, who's got that Friday feeling? Welcome along to the Morning Dash, the fourth episode this week. Coming fast to you, Dave Orson, thrilled to be back. Tom Segal asking about so in association back. with Unibet. Here we are at the Racing Post, loving life because it's glorious out there, isn't it? The weather has turned in our favour after a grim day. More of that to come. How did you get on on Friday? Some of the panel did rather well. I need to pull my socks up again. In and out, up and down, hit the crossbar again. Here we go for more. Like, subscribe, comment and share. That's what it's all about. And let's have some fun. We'll go through the card for you. Golden Mile Day, is that what we call it? One thing's for sure, we've got a short price treble that people are latching on to out there. We'll tell you that very shortly after I go down the panel. Thrilled to say that Brett Williams remains with us. I'll tell you what, Brett, the Unibet t-shirt has gone in the bin. You've now got a nice sort of green and white stripes on it. It means you're feeling colourful and uh, up for the day. Yeah, well, this, 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 this shirt, I hate it. But it comes out once a year because I think this is a proper nice Goodwood shirt. And, you know, my, my Unibet t-shirt t was getting a little bit dirty. So. We were at the ball last night, innit? Were you? No, I wouldn't mind it going, though. So Felix Bexter was not going to see. But no, no, it's so great to be back here. I mean, the morning dash... It's more of a slog now. We're sort of, you know, in the final furlong. We've got a somewhat depleted team, but you know, we've got, we've still got, we've still got the top two, which is most more than more. depleted. Yeah, okay. So, <laughs> hang on a minute. I can't believe you're talking about your shirt. I think you should show people your trainers and, and socks. socks. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The cameras right, don't outrageous. go down. No, no, sadly. It's like Willy Wonka's on the show this morning. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> talking of Wonka's. Um, all right. <laughs> Let's get to Tom and Bob. Very much. <laughs> Because you, you were sitting either side of me yesterday for those that tuned in, and uh, my neck got sore the amount of tennis we yeah. were playing. So we put you up against each other. Put together. Today. Tom, uh, it was a tough day yesterday, wasn't it? That was okay. It was okay. Look, a few, a few ran all right. I, mean, I don't have many tips at Goodwood, so it's all, it's all okay. Keels smashed the first one. I thought he was really impressive. <coughs> right. I thought it was the most impressive performance I've seen all week, actually. All right, well, let's, we'll, we'll get to the review. Um, I'm staying with producer Sam Hart's family all week, and uh, Sam's dad, Dave, who's an extremely shrewd punter, he said, doesn't he look pleased with himself on the front of the paper at five o'clock this morning? <laughs> Cat that got the cream, Mr Keeley, yesterday. Uh, I've nearly got the cream. I mean, it was a painful experience the last race, especially as I've now got to send uh, Mr Dwyer a bottle of wine as well. <laughs> sent me, he sent me a couple of sent me a couple of pictures of bottles of wine that were 45 grand each. He said, either one of them will do. <laughs> uh, you know, that was after my three-pointer sank. Uh, but no, great start. Great start. Yeah. Uh, I was regretting buying as many bottles of that fine Gosborne bubbly that uh, uh, that I did after that thing got beat. But never mind. Whoever the, uh, it was a good whoever day. Whoever Gosborne's had a good week, yeah. they? let's put it that way. Yeah, no, look, so, look it, 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 it's forecast to remain dry, chaps, before we just look back at, at tomorrow's uh, ESA Stars performances. What are we expecting from the ground? Um, Tom, are we just... Is, is, are we, well, well, the, one thing I would, to me. the one thing I would say is I think if you look at yesterday's results, I thought, I think trap, I don't think there was a, on the round course, there wasn't a, a horse that won outside trap six in the big field races. And I think nine of the 57 runners or whatever were drawn five or lower yeah. that were in the first. So I thought it was a big draw advantage yesterday. You know, trap one and two won mm -hmm. the first race. Yeah. Novus won. The, 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 the two-year-old race was won by four and then second was one. So I thought it was a big draw advantage yesterday. Mm. I think it's going to be even bigger today. All right, well, let's come to you, Kills, on that front because uh, it, it means that we're still doing all right in life, Kills, because me and you on this morning always talk about the Golden Mile and the rail. Well, yeah, exactly. I mean, you can't. But basically, they, they take the rail out, so it's now, it's now the course is at its tightest configuration. Uh, they have a, a one-mile handicap, a Mickey Mouse Class 3 one-mile handicap earlier in the week, uh, and it was won by... Uh, horse drawn four, 15 from a horse drawn 14 from a horse drawn 18. Right? They could run that race then, but they just seem to be sticking to it. And you know, we're going to make it as hard as possible for half the field to mm. win, which just seems bonkers to me for such a big prize. But there you go, that's what, that's what they stick to. But I mean, in the last eight years or something, if you weren't drawn lower than five, you were, you were in trouble. Yeah, but I think uh, it's even going to be so worse this year. So is it the biggest draw race of the year? I've got to have a yeah. shadow of a doubt. And I think it's, it's going to be worse this year you. because I think the ground has been oh, wow. so chopped up in the middle that if you're drawn in the middle, yes. the only chance you've got is to sit, to drop straight in on the rail and then you've got no yeah. chance of getting around. Yeah, so, so they've, taken, they've, they've, taken the cut away exactly. away. they've taken the cut away away, so there is fresh ground as you come around the bend as well. Exactly. Right, you know, then you've got to be on it. Yeah. Okay, all right. Well, there are yesterday's star performers on the screen for you, but we should talk about the first race. Uh, Rob, it, it, Ryan was extremely well back, wasn't he? 
the first winner yesterday. Who won the first race yesterday? Roll Ryan. <laughs> 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 Bring back the Unibet shirt. <laughs> yeah, Roll he, he was smashed up. Yeah. Kills went well, for a couple of Well, by Kills, but no, yeah. it was a good... It was a, it was a good, we saw some good racing yesterday, didn't we? A few surprise results, you know, a few sources didn't go in. Yeah. Um, but no, good, good performance from that horse and no, looks to be a progressive type. Well, I think absolutely. And, and Tom, you alluded to the fact you thought it was one of the most impressive performances of the week. That looked a very good handicap. And while some never got going from out the back, he was just different level. Well, it was three and a half seconds quicker than the group one or mm. something. I mean, it was, and the, the figures back it up all the way through the race. I mean, he was, he was fast the whole yeah. way. So... It wasn't like they went terribly slow and he was much slower than them in the last couple of furlongs. He, was, he wasn't far off running what the Group 1 horses did in the last couple of furlongs yeah. as well. So he's a proper horse. He's a, definitely a group, group class horse on soft ground. I don't know where they'll go, but I'd, I'd, I'd be looking at Champions Day for him or something like that in the, wow. in the mud because he's that good. He has all to right. be on what he did there. My favourite wasn't going to Yarp, was it? All never went, confused. did it? Just didn't, never even featured, never got into contention. Big draw race, though, I thought, Keel. Yeah, it, was, it, was, it, was, it was a big draw race, and like you said, we're going to see that again. But, I mean, he is also a horse that obviously goes through bad ground very well. You know, although it wasn't mm. horrific yesterday, the ground, but right. he obviously, he's obviously a very good soft ground horse, and he'll get further as well. Mm, well I thought it looked very hard work in the Richmond for the two-year-olds out there, uh, but Van Dijk came home best as well. Back, Tom, you were talking about his breeze up price mm. yesterday. Uh, they're going to have to aim a terrible bit race, though, wasn't it? It just fell apart a little it was bit. A bit didn't of it? a I mean, rubbish I was, race. I was on sketch, and I knew my fate from how the day was going to go after that. I think. And as we'll see, I mean, Keels will know more about it than me. But uh, he didn't want to be on the near side. I mean, I didn't see that. I was. We were too busy doing. No, it, before it, was, the last it, race. it sort of dawned on me yesterday morning, and that was going to happen. Yeah. Uh, you know, and I was I was a bit annoyed at, annoyed at myself for not thinking about it beforehand because you know the ground was really cut up. Mm. Uh, and again, even though I think it rained again later in the week in 2017, the same thing happened when Here Comes Wim on the Sussex, bottomless ground on the Wednesday. Uh, they, they ignored the, the, the near side because the ground had been so cut up and they carried on ignoring it for the rest of the week. Yeah. And it was just such a surprise yesterday to watch the draw for the Stewards Cup and all the, nearly all the trainers first off were going uh, 24, 26, 28, uh, you know, and then along comes Charlie Hills with a favourite. Uh, and one of the second or third favourites, Tan Mari, well, I've actually had a favourite, Tan Mari, uh, there as well, uh, six, eight, yeah. uh, you know, and, and then other trainers were going 22, 21, 19, <laughs> uh, and they must have been absolutely horrified when they saw the first race yeah. the rest of the day. Yes, they thought, what have we done? But I mean, they've got to be talking to the jockeys. I mean, yeah. they're, they're talking to the jockeys all the time. Yeah, well, like, you know, I love those draws. I love them because yeah. I think they're so funny because it shows yeah. them it shows up what you know they're not, they're not really thinking. And the number of people, number of winners of these races that have been last out the hat yeah. is ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> it's ridiculous yeah. because yeah. It, it, one, it's not as important as they make out, and two, they get it wrong it the just, whole time. It just seems, it just seems That's one job. <laughs> We've got one job. <laughs> exactly. It just seems to me that you know, out of all the people, who, you know, first ten train, ten connections that were out, out of the hat. Uh, Charlie Hills was the only one who'd done his own work. Yeah. Well, like, you know, it's bonkers. Yeah, okay, all right. So, so that's the showpiece that right. works, of course. We'll of course. be getting stuck into The that. winner comes from 28. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Hi, hi, hi. Uh, did we see a ledger winner yesterday in the Gordon uh, States? It's, po it's possible. King? It's possible. Mm. He's good, isn't he? He looks he's, he's getting better. Better the further he went. Yeah, I, I loved his attitude yesterday. This is Desert Hero, of course. You'll see the bottom of the screen of the Gordon Stakes. Uh, we should talk about the favour. I, I think you got it right, by the way. That was a tete-a-tete -tete yesterday. I know that espionage got a little head up and all that sort of stuff, but I, I thought he hated that. He ground. boiled over before. Do you think so? Was, I thought he plodded he on was the never, as well. He was never going. He boiled over he before. Never, uh, it was easy to back, wasn't he, I think, as well. Yeah, it dipped yeah. out to like yeah. 9 to 4. I mean, you know, yeah. uh, Matt Williams was there. He said, you saw him in the parade ring. He couldn't win. Yeah. Just to put a line through that. Yeah. Uh, form as a whole. Um, I, think it's, I think it's decent. I think it's decent. I know people might disagree, but I thought every, a lot of the horses in there like soft ground. There's a lot. Of, I mean, there's not that many good three-year-old staying horses around, no. are they? Well, let's be honest. They tend to ship off, don't they? That's the well, way. one they ship off, or two they go down in trip. I mean, King of Steel's going to go. Never going to run in the St. Ledger. All going to throw. Dan's never going to run in the St. Ledger, isn't it? So, yeah. The, apart from that, you know, White Piero's pretty good horse. He's shipped yeah. off to Hong Kong. So you've got not, not many left. So. Yeah. Why wouldn't he have a good chance? Now, we've got to move on to the Nassau, of course, which was a, a messy affair. It was a clean sweep across the board for the panel yesterday on Blue Rose Sen. Uh, <coughs> messy race. Paul, come to you. Yeah, I mean, it, you, can, you can almost guarantee uh, when a French rider comes over here, they're going to get a load of stick when they get in trouble. Uh, and it's exactly what happened. 
uh, you know, who have tried to go up by a more dinner. Like, you know, I mean, I'm, you know, not the wisest move in the world, <laughs> was it? Like, you know, and did it cost her a race? I mean, the trainer says maybe, maybe not. I think <clears> it did. Uh, I think, I think, I think it should have won. Uh, definitely. Uh, but it just goes to show, why don't you book jockeys with local knowledge? And I'm, I'm not just saying that about French. Right? If I was, you know, if I had a horse that was running in America, right, I would want to book a top American jockey because they have familiarity with the track. They know what to expect. And this is what, this is, this is what the problem, you've got a, a jockey with, you know, he was a fine jockey, mm. but he's coming to a track he knows nothing about, uh, and he fell into a hole that so many jockeys who do know about it, you know, uh, get into. It wasn't even so much that, though, was it? it, it, it we were speaking of it. it. It probably was the first following. If you watch Blue Eyes Sense previous races, she also does like to stretch out. Yeah, I, d I didn't know why he held her up. It was a very slow pace, the time tells you that. I just don't know why he held her up. Yeah. Yeah, she made the running as a a lot of times and he's made the running and the, I don't I don't know what he was thinking really to, to hold her up off a slow pace and the thing is people say oh she didn't really pick up in the last furlong so but when you're going so slow it's really hard to make up the ground mm. you know pick up in that ground like in Na the it, it, it was all wrong for Nashua as well wasn't it obviously yeah um, she's back to the drawing board I think a little bit as well but we we shouldn't take too much away from the winner of course when Roger Varian gets these especially the Shadwell fillies they can go on she'll be I suppose looking to Maybe, try, I don't know, where will she go next? Uh, you think maybe, maybe Philly and Mayers, will she stretch out that far? Oh, I don't know, I'll be taking her. Oh, I'll take her. Yeah, Yorkshire yeah, Oaks, yeah. I think she's in well, the Yorkshire Well, above the curve is a lovely, tough, yeah, sort of, it, it, she's you know, yeah, tough, place solid, group one horse. I, I really yeah. like her. Tough, solid, but not really group one, is it? Yeah. Like, you know oh, what I mean? Yeah. Well, that's a review of yesterday. And for those of you saying, come on, I just want tips. You probably found <laughs> tips in that. That's why we do this, really enjoyed it. What do you reckon? You can get your comments in below. Come on, let's hear from you. Uh, all right, good stuff. Right, there is, of course, now Mr. Williams. This is his, this is his hat trick, Tom. Yeah, I, know. I know you've been grading him. I it was know. An he was ten. When he started. Ten. And he was about a nine yesterday. It wasn't. It was good, but Let, it wasn't let's that. See wasn't, what we'll, let's see how he goes now. now. We'll try and get it back up. So there, as you can see in the caption there, uh, this of course is for new customers only. If you open the account with us, uh, we will be giving you your money back as a refund if your horse gets uh, beaten, and we'll also give you a ten pound for the casino as well. So lots of uh, initiatives to open an account with us at uh, Unibet and we've also got loads of extra place races for you uh, this afternoon as well not to mention super boost and money back if your horse finishes second or third so I'll spin through them for you now we're paying extra places each way in the first race today at 150 the three o'clock the 445 and the 520 in the King George, the um, I was going to say the King George the Six Chase, in the King George the Fifth handicap there that's one of our super boost races on the card today of course Highland Princess is your favourite and if you're back the second or the third in the 150 we'll be giving you your money back as cash so as I said lots of incentives go on to unibet.co.uk forward slash enclosure to avail to all of those offers how was that? That was back on form. High field, Princess. Yeah, and I was still set up. I thought, but, got it but, right. But, uh, uh, Just uh, go. Hang on, and it's not a handicap. Now, listen, I was the one that was drunk last night. <laughs> <laughs> I, I am supposed to be the one making all the mistakes. He was back in the curry uh, house. So, uh, I, I thought it was decent. I thought it was decent. last night. I thought it was decent. Yeah, Fair play. Hang on, you, Brett. Fair play. Let's stick with you, because this gets right stuck into the action now. And on day four of Glorious Goodwood, uh, I don't know, it's going to be sticky, tough ground, isn't it? And uh, wow, you're going to need to see it out in the open. It's two mile four, no starting stalls. They start in front of the stands. It's a right old spectacle. If you're at the track, you've got to get down there and listen to the jockeys when they're rolling around. And uh, competitive as ever, who's at the head of the Unibet market? Yeah, um, calling the wind is, is the favourite. This is a good race, isn't it? As you said, they start in front of the Grand Stand. So for those that sort of don't see the start of races, it, it's great to get down to the start and have a look at them. Yeah, calling the wind favourite um, at 72, quite well backed um, as well. Of course, won it a couple of years ago off the same mark. So, you know, potentially quite well treated. But it's a race where you always see a lot of money for, for, for quite a few of them. Number seven, um, Vino Victrix has been strong into 15 to two um, from tens and um, temporized nine to one uh, from 14s. Tronador's been back, comes over from, from Gordon Elliott's stable. Uh, Law of the Sea's been supported, a few in the, uh, one of three runners in the race for Ian Williams. So I know it's a, it's a, a corker of a race, really yeah. very competitive. Um, and as I said, calling the wild is, or calling the wind is your market leader. Well, you were so good at giving the offers. I'm, I'm going to give you the floor with the tips because you know a bit about the, uh, the Ian Williams yard, don't you? Well, I'll write out there when I'm not sort of getting up at half seven in the morning yeah. to do things like this and talk about offers. Um, yeah. And I'll tell you that Law of the Sea, um, I mean, he, he ran a cracker in the, in the Chester Cup. Uh, on his first run for Ian, he pulled like a train, he was pulling double coming around the bend, and Franny Norton was swinging out of him, he had nowhere to go. 
Um, I'm not saying he would have won if, if the gap would have opened because it was his first run, so he would have come on. But um, that was a good effort, and I just think the step back up to two and a half will really suit him. I mean, when you see him, when you see him amongst the string, he has just got quality about him. He's a beautiful looking horse. You know, he's as I said, he'll go on the ground. And I think, I'm not surprised to see he's been well back. I did try to get Ian on this morning, actually, and he was going to do it. Um, but when I said it started at half eight, he was like, mm -mm. <laughs> And he probably knew you were wearing that yeah, shirt yeah. Yeah. as well. Um, does, does he preferize you before he allows you on <laughs> we, we, we both do. He's worse than me. <laughs> He's got the Grand Vizier in there, Kills, as well, and this is one you like. I like two, I like two of his, Laura C. and, and, and okay, the Grand Vizier. Both. Now, the Grand Vizier, obviously, we know all about him. He's nine years old. He's a... Uh, he's a tough, hardy stayer, and uh, and uh, he's got decent form everywhere. I think he was fourth or fifth in this race uh, three years ago or so, uh, and he's you know he's been placed in Royal Ascot races and that and won uh, was won at Royal Ascot, didn't he? Didn't he win at Royal Ascot one year? Yeah, he did. Yeah, he did. Yeah, he yeah. did. Like you know, so you know, and he's on a reasonable mark. He he has run well most of the time this season. He didn't run well last time. Uh, uh, and yeah, so I like him at a price. I like Lord of Sea because of that Chester run. Last time's ride I got struck, struck into mm. um, uh, uh, a Newcastle, so that's a throw out run. I think, I think they'll both run well. Ian Williams has a remarkable record with stayers. Mm. Uh, I was just looking back, I mean, my race form interactive goes back to 2009. He's had more than a thousand runners in one mile, six furlong or further handicaps in Britain. And if you backed every single one of them, you'd be in profit. It's mad. Yeah. Chester Cups, I mean, uh, yeah. Ascot yeah, Stakes. Yeah, he's won this race twice as well. Yeah. He's won yeah. it with seven and eight-year-olds as well. So, mm. you know, don't worry about the age with the Grand Vizier. Brett was mentioning market movers. Both of yours have, have come yeah. crashing in. I think these are the punters that people like to look for you, Tom, for some guidance. Vino Victrix and, of course, Tronador is an interesting run. I like Vino Victrix most of the two. I just thought his Cesarowicz form was, was, was really good. I mean, if he runs to that level, I think he'd win this. Mm. Uh, he's not been the same horse since. No, I fancied him in the Chester Cup. I'm not sure really sure what went wrong. No, he just never figured. No, he never figured that. Uh, don't know whether it was ground related or what, but I thought he ran a lot better in the uh, Northumberland Plate last time. He was one of the ways, ones that raced up with a pace and it was really hard. They, they, they sort of place collapsed in that race and they all came from the back. So I think, you know, he likes Goodwood, likes soft ground. Well, yeah. he's won on soft ground uh, uh, here before. Uh, he's only couple of pounds higher than when he ran second in the Cesarich. I mean, he had no chance against Run for Oscar, but he beat the rest handily. I just thought he'd go well. He was a double figure we price. We saw what Huey did in the previous day. Right? Yeah, week, Tom so. Marquand's back on. I think he'll be ridden quite prominently. I hope yeah. he'll get on the nice strip of ground and therefore I thought he'd go well. Tronador's a bit risky because on flat form he's got not really, you know, his flat form's a bit messy. Really. You've got the right trainer though, haven't you? Let's face it, he seems I'm, to be farming I, everything. I, when, I, when I went through the race, I sat, I sat there and I thought, jumps trainers, they win most of these stand races. This horse is 14 to 1 you know, what he was yesterday. But, I mean, discussing it with Keels, his flat form's not that great. The only thing I would say is when he won at Limerick last time, he beat a horse called You Crack Me Up, who absolutely hacked up at Galway this week, won by five lengths. So I wonder whether our Racing Post rating guys have underrated that race, because they've given him a very low mark. He's bottom rated in this race. And he's, and he's 50 pounds lower, 60 pounds lower than his highest ever... Uh, Jumps mark back on the flat. He's only rated 77 and he was rated 136. Did they try and get him in the Fred Did he run in the Fred Wood? He did. He won the yeah. ass. He won, he won a big entry he handicap. That's right. Yeah. He won an eight on the bridle. Yeah. Beat some good horses. And he beat well. some good yeah. horses. Yeah. Yeah. On his flat form, <coughs> you throw him out. I'm pretty sure of that. But yeah, I threw, form, I, I, that's exactly what I did. I threw him out. I, was, I said, I judge came to the conclusion he can't win. So. There's a lot of agreement uh, going on here this morning. But I is that, is that in due due just noses. on his flat form? Yeah, yeah, just, just on his flat form. Yeah, yeah just, yeah. just, just on his flat form. I just mm. decided, no, I'm, I'm, I'm not having him. But I mean, you can definitely see the angle because he has that. He, he, he has that hurdles ability. Yeah, um, I quite like Agaggio here for Gary Moore, who's got the course form. Forget him last time. He fell out of the gates. But the Courage Mon and me form, I think we can... Don't judge courage, one of me. Will he get up, quite anyway. get home over this <laughs> trip? Will he? That's a amazing story, yeah. him, isn't he? When they he, amazing story, isn't they? they picked him up in that cellar. From, Sophie Leach's, yeah, yeah that's yeah. right. He, they've done really well with him, and look, we saw what Novus did yesterday. I think, I, I think there's a little bit of hope about him here, and uh, this has probably been the plan, I would imagine, third time up. But look, he's one of a number of horses. It's really good to see a Northumberland Plate winner in here, isn't it? Because mm -hmm. calling the winner, who's of course taken this run. Um, and yeah, we have seen Hot Pots win this for you. Remember Lil Rockefeller who was a good young under Sylvester oh, yeah. Kick on and go. I mean, he's a classy horse because he travels quite Absolutely. well. Absolutely. Well, I know Andy Smith had, a, had an interest in Lil Rockefeller and 
Uh, he sent he sent me a text that year and he said we're booking we're booking Sylvester and I sent him one back I said don't don't put his name on it yet with it when prices <laughs> yeah, are out exactly and he said too <laughs> late he, he, too late he wanted to be confirmed and of course that was it <laughs> he, he opened up with about four to one you know so you know, all right we could have got something about it got to mention go on two horses calling the wind exactly yeah, yeah. we're in a Northumberland plate winner yeah. um, one of my favourite horses in trading because he just runs his race every time doesn't win very often. But he's there or thereabouts, and he did win this quite easily a couple mm. of years ago. Uh, and so he's got to, he's got to have a he's, he's got to have a serious chance. He has actually only won two turf races out, out of nineteen, but he's a, you know he's just a very very consistent horse and he'll run well. And Tritonic, yeah, I was say mm. Tritonic, Tritonic. And um, oh, I'm become I'm, a project that I'm one. not a hundred percent certain it will stay, but he's a talented horse that will be running in this sort of race. He didn't get past two mile on the Averdles. No, time. no, I'm not. I'm not 100. percent I'm not 100 percent certain he would. But I mean, you know, he has a bit more class on a lot of these. That's right. There's loads that's though, the in there, yeah. isn't there? There's there loads is, of improvers down the bottom. Right, as well. I've got to pin you down to one kills. I know you put two up. Which of the two are you stronger on? Uh, I like Lord of the Sea most, uh, and that's for you, Brett, as well. Lord of the Sea. I'm, I'm a Gaggio, and you are Vino Victrix. All right, okay. There are the tips. You can see them down the bottom. Uh, do what you will with that. <coughs> it's going to be a fun puzzle, and I hope you solve it. Uh, shall we go to one of the hot pots of the week? Uh, it is, of course, the Group 3 Thoroughbred Stakes and uh, Nostrum. Uh, well, we'll, we imagine, go off one of the shortest price horses running anywhere at Goodwood this week for Sir Michael Stout. He came back at Newmarket last time, didn't he, Brett? And he absolutely tore them a new one. Um, different ground, of course, here. Mm. And what is the market saying about that? Well, they're not worried about it. Now 8 to 15 from 8 to 13, so real strong support for Nostrum. As you said, it was good to see him come back with that win at Newmarket last time in, in, the, in that listed race. Yeah, grind is obviously going to be a bit of an issue, but as I said, the punters aren't, don't seem too worried about it. Um, Epic Titus has got four months off, so it could be a bit of a danger. Um, another another, um, another um, son of, of, uh, of Kingman. Um, I'd like to say it's been something else back, but it hasn't really. Um, you know, you're looking at 5 to 1 Docklands, who has again got winning four months off and won in Britannia last time. He's clearly quite a progressive sort, but I think this Nostrum is, is going to be a, a top notch. I think we'll end up seeing him in you know, you know, top class races further down the line. And a, t a typical sort of state, you know, improver, just he's been patient yeah. with it, brings it along nicely. And um, no, um, the first of the sort of the, the three good things on the card today. Oh, there is the treble. This is the <laughs> first leg, of course. It pays around about uh, three to one. Uh, so let's, we'll get to that. But this is the first leg, of course. We want to believe that this could be a very, very good horse for Sir Michael, don't we? I mean, his, his one blip, and if you can call it a blip, was placing in the, in the Dewhurst, of course. It was hard not to be extremely impressed at New, at New Market. Uh, yes, it, it was. It was. But I don't think it was. I think people over-egged his performance a bit that day. The figures aren't brilliant on it. It was a group two, group three performance and everyone's talking to him as well as the next great, the next big thing. Well, because Listen, we need one, don't we? Absolutely yeah. right. No, Absol this was the race that Baid won. And look, to be perfectly honest, it was first run of the season. So it was still a monster performance. Mm. He, can, he can improve on that. It wasn't a group one performance like they're saying he's going to win the, the Sussex Stakes and this and that on what he showed at Newmarket, but he could get there. Yeah. And the, pro the thing about this race is it is only a group three, but it's a pretty good one. You know what I mean? There's some horses there with some good solid form. I don't. I think he'll win, but I don't. I'm not convinced he's an eight to fifteen shot to win on That's ground sure. like this. I yeah. agree. If they're letting I'm him run of, kills, they must be quite confident of his ability to act on it. Yeah, of course. Yeah. I mean, you, you, you don't necessarily associate Kingman with really bad ground, but you know, Clark of the course was saying today there's going to be good in the description. Yeah, the I think there will be. Like, you know, so it's not going to be that. It's not going to be that bad. He'd be fine. Uh, and you know, the, the interview afterwards with Sir Michael Stout, he obviously really, really rates the horse as well, uh, and that makes you think. You know, that, that's what put me off trying to take him on. Yeah. I mean, I, I, you know, I spent half of the day before yesterday trying to take on Espionage and change my mind, yeah. uh, and he finished tailed off. I don't think that's quite going to happen here because I think, I think Nostrum will run his race and be hard to beat. But I do think Doctors <laughs> is the danger. Okay. I mean, if you, if you look at the Britannia from. Split it into two races, right? Far side, near side. Right? He's essentially won by six lengths, and he won his previous race by six and a half lengths. Right? You know what I mean? So he's been winning. He's been winning really, really easy because he absolutely thrashed him on the stand side. Mm -hmm. right? you know, the next five, six, or seven home were uh, <coughs> were on the other side. Uh, you know, so he's obviously a very, very good horse. They're talking about taking him, possibly taking him to Australia. Well, that so is the plan. Like, yeah. that's what it's HI racing. That, that's yeah. what they do. You know, so he, he's a very good horse, and they probably haven't got to the bottom of him. But it was only a handicap off a of mark in the nineties. Uh, yeah. And he's going to sound stupid. I'm worried about his draw. 
slightly worried. If we if we if we're going to, I know we'll go on to it. I know, I'm not going to. I'm not going to. I'm not going to argue with that. I mean, on the know, wing. On well, the wing well, in yeah, trap seven. Gonna, yeah, he's going to have to. He's gonna so have he's going to. She's Haley's going to drop him in, isn't she? And then she's going to have to get past them all. Get through, yeah. Yeah. So that's, that would just be a slight concern. But I'm with Keels. I, I thought he, he looks a proper, proper horse. He does. Interesting. Uh, Knight is relatively interesting. What is he, 16s? 16s, yeah. You guys at the yeah. He, he, he can't be, I mean, look, look, you need to prove he's trained on. But if you go back to his Newbury run, you could see why they were getting excited about him, uh, Simon and Christopher during the winter. He could outrun his odds. I think Bold Discovery is not a bad horse either. Tough sort for, uh, for Jesse Harrington. Galeron, he's the other one. I, I, I'm sorry, Dave, I don't fancy Knight or Bold Discovery at all. I thought Galeron had a chance. Poor blimey. Give because he ran an absolute blinder in the Irish 2000 guineas. It was the day when you couldn't come up the middle. He was held up out the back, flew home. He got a shocker of a ride at Royal Ascot last time. He's not. A, he, he went right up with Chaldee and up with the pace. Uh, went way too quickly. Yeah. I think he likes soft ground. I don't expect him to be good enough to beat Docklands or Nostrum, but I think he'll beat Knight and Bold Discovery. So a better race than perhaps some people might be thinking. And could he, settle it? could he settle in front as well? Yeah, he Dylan? could do. He could mm. do. Yeah, I, I'm expecting season. Frankie to go in front, really, from stall mm. one. Yeah, yeah. Nostrum didn't, act, he, wasn't, he wasn't far off though, was he? In fact, did he make all at Newmarket, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. Nostrum yeah. did, so yeah, he, he, did, yeah. he was a little bit keen and he thought, oh, yeah. what's he going to find? But no, Absolutely I think that's what they do. I think I think Ryan will take just the ball by the horns and Ryan's crack on. Just yeah. a mustard at that, isn't he? All right, okay. This is the second race, and uh, let's get the tips out of the way. Then I don't think Nostrum will get beat, and I want to believe he's a star. And I need Sir Michael Stout to have that decent horse again. I think this will be it. Uh, Tom. Well, I think I think Nostrum will win, but I, I mean I'm, I'm a massive fan of Docklands so mm. at the price. No, I think, I think. And Galleron, so one, yeah. two, three is giving you there as well. All right, kills. Yeah, I, I think Nostrum. I think Nostrum will win, and I, I, uh, but I do very much respect Docklands. We're due a clean sweep after Blue, after Blue Rose Sun, aren't we? Yeah, no, I agree. I agree with everything Kills just said. Yeah, Nostrum, Nostrum's the one. Um, although I was disappointed that Stout got that supposedly good thing beaten in the first mm. yesterday. So yeah, no. maybe the form of the yard would be questionable. But no, I think Nostrum could be a class act. I think he's going to have a double today. We'll get to that. All right, OK, three o'clock. It is the Golden Mile, the draw race of the season. Yeah, it's not the Chester Cup. It is the Golden Mile. Uh, you, historically, you have to be low here. If you're just tuning into the morning dash, we're going to try and tell you what's going to win this very, very true puzzle. Mark it, please. Red yes. Wheels. So Latam is your, is your favourite at seven to two. Got a good draw. Um, you, you'd hope in three. Been well backed as well. Got a good good winning form on, on soft ground. I'll give you a few others that have been supported as well. And number eighteen, the gate gatekeeper, sixteens from twenty. That I'm racing in what five again? Decent draw. Uh, Ross Collin. See, I'll be brushed up on my pronunciation yeah, on that one. Ross Collins, Ross Collins, Ross Collins. Elevens from 16 has been supported as well. And Alwell, 15 to 2 from 9. has got the cheap pieces on for the first time. And Tackery Bay, horse I really like. I backed him at Ascot at the weekend. He ran a cracker. He won his race down the far side. I think he'll come on for that. It was his first run since April. Um, I really like Tackery Bay and he will love the ground out there. And not drawn badly at all in four as well. It's an extremely valuable handicap. And it's an extremely tricky puzzle to solve. Five places each way. And yet, three men on the panel are in agreement. It's not that tricky to solve, is it? It's never that tricky to solve, really. Just back something in the lowest five stalls. At the yeah, end but hang on, the hang on. I'll take you to task Sling out right, 15 miles You can away. find so much trouble on the inside. Yeah. Right? Ryan Moore's got a brilliant record in it. Right? Yeah, I mean, you know, we've seen, we've seen the results over the past few years, though, haven't you? One of them wins. One of them will win. One of them all right, wins. so, OK. Yeah, so. So, but what I'm saying is you've all gone for Takarib Bay, right? Well, he was, he, was just an, he was just an absolute stick, stick out. I think he should be favourite, to be honest. I mean, he won the race on the far mm. side on Saturday uh, and he won it quite comfortably and he beat Fresh. He was an yeah. absolute Ascot specialist. You know what I mean? It all the really, good horses, really, really, all the really fancied really. horses were on the far side. I know Baradol was well fancied, but, but all the fancied mm. horse, all the money was for the ones on the yeah, far side. Yeah, and just, he they were just on, them. They were just on the wrong side of the track. And very he, strong wind at Ascot. We were there, easily. weren't we, right down the, it was, it was yeah. tough on the far side, I think. Yeah, it was very tough on the far side. Yeah. What, what amazed me, isn't it, in a couple of races later, there, another straight track race, but most of them went down, most of them went down <laughs> the centre. Don't get started. <laughs> Frankie. And the other Godolphin and, and the other Godolphin rider came on their own side to, to where, you know, the, where the Victoria Cup, where the international story had just been won by miles. Like, you know, and, oh, guess what? They finished first and second. That's absolutely crazy. We're hoping other jockeys do appear on this show, of course, going forward. Uh, don't be afraid to come on. Uh, all right, okay. Um, so, Takarib Bay, just the case has been given. 
Yeah, well, he, he, he won he, miles, no problem. The slight concern, if there is one, is that his best form is at Ascot, and this is very different. But he's won once here, and he was beaten a length and a half in a very solid seven furlong handicap. It was a good race drawn, last year. And it, well, did he run in this race last year? No, it was year? a good race last year. Yeah. And it was seven furlongs And as it well. was seven furlongs, and he was drawn in stall 11 on yeah. the outside that day. Yeah, and, and, he was, and he was charging home. And he was charging home. So I don't see oh. that being a problem, but... You know, that's the only thing, that's the only quite thing, as you can say. I mean, I literally, every year, just the bottom five stalls, that's it. So I gave the gatekeeper a chance, I gave Sonny Liston a chance, I gave... A lot of people do the exactors and yeah. the trifectas yeah. and all that Well, let's talk about Reevich. I mean, he's got track one. He, I, he had right. track 15 last yeah. year, yeah. 66 I, to I one. knew that you, um, most people were going for well, he's, he's Takarib Bay, and I wanted to put something up. I think Jim Crowley in, in stall one... I can just see him going really close. He's here. again. He, he, he's another. I love Revit. He's another one of my favourite horses, and, and and not just because I like the way he runs and uh, and and he, and he does run consistently in some of these big handicaps. Well, I've actually met him. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he was uh, yeah. I went up to Richard Spencer's yard uh, uh, a couple of seasons ago, and uh, he actually stuck his head out of his watch, and he just he was just happy for me to pat him and all that. I quite enjoyed it. <laughs> yeah. So he's a bit. Of, he is a bit of a fav of mine. Uh, and yeah, he can run really well. I mean, he was drawn 15 last year, came charging, came charging home. Uh, my only issue with him, when, it is, when the ground is soft, it's right at the very end of his stamina, a mile. But people will be listening to this saying, well, you didn't see, you said it was going to be good in the description, you know, so it's... No, but yeah, it's, it's still, it, it's still going to be a bit testing. It's not going to be... A, it's not he going will to be need the, some luck, obviously, won't he? Yeah, well, yeah, it depends, yeah. might they go forward yeah, with him? They've oh, gone forward, they've they forward with him yeah, loads They won't times. be in the front, they won't be leading with him, will they? Well, if they don't lead, then he's got no chance. Well, I'm not sure about that. Yeah, I'm not sure Jim Crowley would lead on him, but I mean, you know... Well, see, that's what I think Jim's got to do, because I think if Jim gets behind, he's, you know, he'll be... I'm not suggesting they're going to hold him right up, I just think he'll sit. Midfield. What about Latam? To me, he's a bit of a lummox. Can I say to everyone what you said when you looked at these decks yesterday yeah. when we were talking about? You went boring. Yeah. You know, because it's Latam and it's Haggis and it's Marquand, obviously, and we were expecting. <laughs> he's had short the get beat then. He's had yes, lots well already. It, you once called him a bookmaking deity, do you remember? Yeah, oh, absolutely. Yeah. You know, William and the, and the crew just always find themselves. But that is mm. because they have extremely progressive horses. We saw this guy in Ireland, we saw him in some big He came to the game last time, scratched on Saturday. To get home. Didn't he this in can't Ireland. have been the plan, can it? If he was going to run on Saturday, well, it might have been. Well, would a, a quick well, back up? You don't well, really have to associate that day. with yeah, doing yeah, the same. Well, back up. They took him out because the ground wasn't soft enough. Yeah, uh, you know, and there yeah. was a bit of cut on Saturday. He's on the slide a bit, isn't no, he? Yeah. I've seen some. Uh, um, yeah, but like Tom said, like, you know what I mean? He's, you know, I mean, you can't get a more galloping course on the cover. And they see it took ages to get going. Now he's going to run him around a tight bend downhill at Goodwood. It might not be his track. Yeah, I think he'll get in trouble. I mean, he's because he's. Goodwood, you need a bit of zip, don't you? Yeah. That's the type of horse that normally win at Goodwood. Look at Uzo yesterday. Loads of zip. In and out of the, in and out of the gaps came through. I don't see Latam as being that type of I'll horse. I'll tell you who's interesting with that, and he has been backed. And I, I, I really quite like him because I backed him as a two-year-old. He, 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 he dances some big dancer, but David Egan's got a good spin here, potentially, on the Wizard of Eye. And if you go back to his form against the boxer, whose name I forget, in the, in the seven final group three, was it last year? The German horse. Mm. Yeah, the German horse, whose name I can't yeah, remember. And he can go forward. Yeah, he can go forward, and he's a, he's a, he's a lovely animal, this. I, I really, really like him, I think Stan Ball. Yeah, he's, got a he's, a, he's a stable star. He's quite interesting. He's handicapped David as well, we don't really know about him. Uh, let's play the game of when you saw the decks come out. Who did you groan about? Was it Ross Golan or someone like that? No, because David O'Mara has done something wrong to the to the draw machine here, hasn't he? Yeah, but I mean, look at he, look, look at the horses he ran in it last year. I mean, he couldn't have got a better draw out of yeah, it. Okay. Sometimes that happens, doesn't it? Like you know, Stewart. He had the first and second last year, didn't he? Yeah, uh, and. Uh, one of them was blue for you, finished second last year. Mm. Oh, Perotto? Yeah. That was the one I went for. Perotto can't win on soft ground. Okay, but people know he's associated with yours, but he's obviously in 17. Yeah, he's in 17. He's, he's got good form here. He's won here. Like, you know what I mean? But he's in 17 and the ground isn't in his favour, so I can't have him today. Blue for you, Blue for you was the one that I grown for because he's £3 well. He won an absolute career best last time. And you know that David O'Meara target, David O'Meara targets this, this race. And I thought if he got a low one, I'd be all, all over him. I don't know, but it's just still a little worries he's, me. He's done very, very well. He's a saver. You know, every now and again, it is one yeah, well, yeah, horse. Yeah, like, you yeah. know what I mean? But it's I just mean, not once, that often. Some listen. We saw the race yesterday, didn't we? The Novus race, and John mm. Egan rode the second for Peter mm. Chappellheim. He was in stall twelve, and he ended mm. up in front of Novus on the rail after mm. about half a furlong. So it can be done. Can be done. Yeah. You know, yeah. it can and be Jason done. Jason Watson's yeah. having a great meet, isn't he? I mean, so. the problem is sometimes you get that mad dash, and then they all fall in a hole, and something comes through. All right, okay. Tips. 
I like Sacred Bay. We should just point out that that run at Ascot was his first run since being gouded as well. So he might, you know, things sort of might just sort of start falling into place for him now. He can get his act together. So yeah, Sacred Bay for me. Yeah, I like Sacred Bay. Should mention Racing Brakes Rider. Three-year-old a, uh, a horse that can go forward. Horse that goes forward. I hope he doesn't because I think it went too fast to Ascot. But he's three from three, I think, on soft ground, and uh, it's just he, I know before Ascot he was the one of the horses that Charlie Hills liked most going into Ascot. It was a tough race that for him because of his racing style. He went too it? fast. Yeah, he went yeah. way too fast. Conor Planis is a great five off his back. But this track will be better for him. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, Kills. Yeah, we're all over Tackery Bay. Yeah. We're all right. Okay, uh, and it'll be Revich for me. Uh, Jim Crowley stalled one. Uh, shall we move on to the second leg of what a lot of people are latching onto the treble then, of course, because this is uh, the Qatar King George Sprint Stakes, uh, made famous by Batash, of course, in recent years. And Highfield Princess has the market here, Brett. Um, I think we, we have to say deservedly so, whether we want to be taking what price about it, we'll discuss in a sec. She's odds on four to five, and, and yeah, <coughs> I agree with everything you're probably going to say. You've just said she is the class horse in the race, but that's plenty short enough for me, especially on a track like this, and she's just not looked her brilliant best so far in this campaign. There's been a little bit of opposition to her in the market, but this is probably just people just trying to find something to, to perhaps finish second to her. White Lavender's been supporting to 14s uh, from 16. Um, Makarova, 12s from 14s, and also the quality, um, you know, in a real sort of real rich vein of form at the moment for, for Charlie Hills is around six to one from eights, although as well, being in the handicap at this meeting last year. Um, She's probably the most likely winner, Highfield Princess, but I just, I'm not entirely, not, not convinced about her, to be honest. There are a few buts coming out, thanks Brett, aren't there, about uh, her. Um, of course, it was this weekend last year where she went over to France and really announced herself on the scene as a top flight sprinter. Um, she's danced the dance again. We thought she was a good thing at Ascot Kills, didn't she? And, you know, she just got touched off there. Has she quite been seeing it out this week? <sighs> I wouldn't knock her too much. No, no, I'm not, 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 not knocking I think her. She's you know, she was a bit below form on the uh, on the second time at Ascot. I mean, but then that's understandable. Mm. I haven't had two goes in a week. Uh, you know, she's still got the best form by a country mile out of these lot. And she, you know, the last time she ran on soft ground at the Cowra last year, she absolutely hacked up over five pounds. She's absolutely the horse to beat. I think she'd probably win. But I also I, I also think there may be the odd chink, uh, and it's worth having to go with something at a bigger price. I the one I came down on. Uh, was Silky Wilkie. Uh, he won the Scottish Sprint Cup earlier in the season by five, five, five ish lengths. I love sprinters who win by wide margins in Class 2 handicap. They invariably always turn out to be group class. And I think he is going to get there in the end. He's a bit, bit slower than I'd, I'd imagined, but he'd have won the dash with a clear run. Uh, and and uh, last time out, it was, it was last time out was after a break. He chased home Nymphadora, who is in the field, and he's got a bit to find with her. But she's a proper York horse. Uh, and I just thought he was a little bit rusty that day. I, I like her. I think she's going to confirm the form uh, kills. Yeah, I don't. I, I, I love don't, the uh, fact she's drawn next I've to Highfield Princess. I've already had a side bet with somebody else over this as well. Mm. <laughs> uh, let's <laughs> talk. Uh, uh, and, uh, but a bottle of wine for me <laughs> coming, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, another 45 grand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, uh, no, I, I, think, I think he's going to get there. And, you know, he's obviously shown that he can handle a, a oh, I remember backing him on your weather and he got beaten from me. He's, he's a very oh. consistent horse. I know the dash was massively eye catching. Yeah, I just thought, you know, he was 20 to 1 yesterday. And I, I just thought it's a big price each way. Yeah, you have to think that the pace is going to be low here with Highfield Princess just trying to get them out of the comfort zone, don't you, Tom? I think, I think she's a good thing. I think she's miles better than these. A bit of Matty Williams about yeah. this morning. Oh, no, well, absolutely. I mean, I, I, even, even on her ascot form, she's better than these. And people are saying she didn't run up to form. Uh, I thought the second run at Ascot was pretty good, actually, over six funnels. She was drawn on the wrong side. Cardem and Sacred were up the other side. She won her race on her side easily. Little bit disappointed with her run in the King Stand, to be honest, because I thought she'd win that day. But I think she got hampered a few times, and she well, was coming she back at Brad. She was coming back at Bradsell. So I wouldn't. Uh, Bradsell's a very good Ascot horse, clearly. It's run twice there, I think, or three times there. But it's won the Coventry by a long way, and the and the yeah. King Stand. So wouldn't hold that against her. I think she's miles better than these. Yeah, I, uh, I, I, I was one of those erring on the side of it. It nearly cost her at Ascot because she is a horse that just needs to get into that rhythm. Listen to Jason Hart. He says well, she she goes and then she, then when she gets into her top gear, she just goes again. It's not necessarily an electric turn of foot. She just finds, finds, finds. I just think the ground's right. Everything's right. The draw's right. If she doesn't win this, then you have got serious worries about her. How far is she going to win by? Because we're five to two up two and including two lengths or five to two over two lengths. Mm. See, I think she'll win easily. I think she'll win more than uh, two lengths no, herself. She certainly deserves it. Hang on a minute. Tom 
almost interested in a winning division. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. And the other thing is, I'm not that keen on equality. What do you think? Um, I, I don't know. I don't I'm, know. It just, it's one of those horses you, I never want to him. No. I didn't give, mind you, I didn't give him the chance that he had at Sandown no. last time either, and he won. He put but up an amazing weight carrying going. performance at Windsor when he bounced back. Yeah. He? I, I, yeah. I covered that race. Yeah, I mean, and is that, that's actually the first time he's backed up, isn't it? Yes. You know what I mean? So, you know, so I think he, it might, he be, might be going forwards. It, it might, might be, be me, because I had a very good bet on him in the uh, yeah, Racing exactly. League There's, last year. Exactly. There's a, oh, he came he, second at Windsor, didn't he? And it was the unluckiest loser I think I've ever seen in my entire life. So it's probably me against him. There's always a reason you can dislike horses, isn't there? Exactly. I never liked Q card for some reason. I don't know why. There we go. But and also he's run two bad races at Goodwood. What well, cue card? No. <laughs> uh, he ran he ran a shocker in the Lord Ridderford race last year when he was drawn next to him and he should have run a lot better yeah. at quality. But he has run well at Epsom. But he still he was still beaten by horses like Mountain Peak getting weight. So whether he really likes these downhill tracks, I don't know. I I don't know. I think I feel princes princesses should win that easily. You'll be delighted to hear that that's the second leg of the treble. All right, kills. Yeah, I think she'll win, but I've backed Silky Wilkie each way. Tom. Yeah, well, I think I feel Princess will win, yeah. I think, she's, I think she's the best of the uh, short price ones. Yeah, the one right. I'd like to back the most, for sure. La Correct. Ladies' Church, just, as, just to throw one in. Glad he got a mention. Sweet, yeah, comes over from Johnny Mirror. To, um, you know, she's, probably, she's probably got to find it a little bit, but you never know. Art There's Powell no such thing as certainty, is there? Art Power has just destroyed her, didn't he? Uh, uh, his, his beloved co. I think he's got a great chance in France at, at the weekend, so I'll be uh, keeping an eye on that. And uh, yeah, I think Nymphadora is going to run well at a price. I, I like the fact that she's drawn next door to Eiffel Princess, and uh, she'll give us something to think about, I think. And uh, yeah, Jason Watson again, isn't it? As I said, having a great meet. There are the tips down below. If you're on the treble, we'll tell you what we think the final leg might be after this. today there you go get involved non-november why not we've got all the big festivals coming your way still we've got york haven't we we're going champions Day. we've got some ledgers come on get involved uh all right on to the 410 we're gonna have to get a bit of pace about us now this is the morning dash mm. lads all right we've, <laughs> we've come slowly out of the stalls but we're gonna fire on we're doing a shaquille basically now and this is the final leg of what a lot of people will be looking at the traveler is hamish of course scratch from the king draws because it wasn't soft enough on Saturday, and now he finds himself down in Group 3 company. What price are we talking here, Brett? Four to six. So you're not going to get rich back. And you might be interested in the Nostrum, Highfield Princess and Hamish uh, trio, which were five to one for all, all three to win today. No opposition to him whatsoever in the market. Um, mimic you a little bit, nine to two from fives. But now it's, you, you, know, you try and look at the form and... You know, he's, he's, he looked good at, at your class time, as you said, pulled out, uh, was going to run in the King George. You know, he's, he should win, really, you think? I think it better suggests. That. This is where I get my Matty Williams out, and I just think we move on. I, I think he will win this. I know he took a, an age to get up at your class time, but I, I, I really, really like this horse. What's not to like about him? And I think this is just the, the sort of ride that Tom Marquand excels at. I see that Williams obviously got Candleford in there as well. You remember one of the most impressive winners of a handicap at Royal got mm. you've ever seen last season. You've got Mimki in there, who hasn't quite come back yet, but she probably won't find <laughs> the ground. And a fascinating one, of course, from Norway is hard one to please if you if you're part of the members club you've seen chris cook's front runner email this morning which went out and he's he, he got a great word with the trainer and there is a, a norwegian couple that follow you around paul keely isn't it like uh, it's, they, there? it's pear and it's pear and karen yeah uh, brother and sister they go they go racing all around the world uh, and a few of us from the racing post met them about five years ago and we see them at the big races uh, wherever we go yeah like, you know what i mean so we had a a good drink and a chat with him last night and, and, and on Tuesday. And Pear said to me, 
who's Karen's brother, he said, he said, we have, he goes, I'm a massive horse racing fan, we have to travel because we've only got one track in Norway and it's Ovrival, which I think I've got right. Yeah. And he goes, and it's rubbish. We've got a group three. So you can put a line through this, but Jim Crowley will now steer that one and over. It's a fascinating horse at least. Um, Hamish, Tom. Yeah, I think he'll probably win. I don't like Candleford. He's an Ascot horse, isn't he? Or, 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 uh, or uh, uh, all weather horse. Uh, thought if there was to be an upset, it might be Tomesius Fox. Lope de Vega, another, we won't get into the Lope de Vega again, but he's got a lot of horses running this week that have run really well. I know Keels will fancy another one later on, but I thought he might be the horse to chase home Hamish, but I didn't. I mean, Mimic who's gone a bit fun, he's got the pieces so. on. I think so. The treble's on them for Tom. I think Kiel's. so. Yeah, I mean, look, how can you not like him? He's just a wonderfully tough and consistent and extremely well-placed horse mm. over, the, over the years, isn't he? Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? And yeah, he's, a, he's, he's going to be very hard to beat. The, the one... You know, the, the one doubt, I suppose, is if it's another warm day and the drier it gets, the more vulnerable he becomes because he's a proper soft ground horse. But I can't see it not having some ease in the ground by uh, at 4 p.m. So, uh, yeah, he's, he's going to be very, very hard to beat. Mimikyu can be a bit free, can't she? You don't you just don't know what to expect with her, do you? She's quite... She is quite talented. Well, it's the, uh, these are the Goldstones we saw we do with Nashua, right, mm. uh, John and Dave. Yeah, so you, you can't write her yeah. off at all. I am a big fan of Candleford. I do think, yeah, I do think he has potential to run another big race here. But like Tom said, it's probably going to be an Ascot. He's an Ascot buzzer, isn't he? All right, Brett, just Richard win as well. Yeah, I think so. It's just no point in going for anything else, really. Is there? All right, the treble's on. And uh, at the moment, with the price at Unibet, they'll probably play about around about 11 to 4, I would imagine. But maybe some of them will drift. All right, let's get into the final two races, shall we? And uh, uh, it's a nursery coming up, and I said just on the track, didn't I? I don't like nurseries, I, I don't really like them at, at Glorious Cooper, but I really like one of these for my sins. I'll tell you what it is after Brent gives us the market. Yeah, so we're paying four places each way in this. Uh, the favourite, Starless, strong favourite as well, nine to two from fives uh, for Rafe Beckett and, and uh, Connor Planis. Um, a few others have been back, Richard Hannon's got two in it. Read his Unibet blog, actually, he's got some really interesting thoughts on his runners today, and. Um, I'm going to speak to him in a minute and we'll, we'll get his, his uh, thoughts on Saturday. But anyway, yeah, Dapper Valley's been quite popular. That went into 12s from 16s. Impressive on debut at Newbury um, three starts ago. Gade and the filly, she can get a bit worked up at the stores, but she's got a lot of talent. She's a 14 to 1 shot. Uh, and then Loaded Gun, um, one on uh, soft ground at Chester, uh, a 6 to 1 shot uh, for Andrew Boarding and Ryan Moore. Yeah, he's the one I like. Mm. Uh, I, I, I'll get it out of the way. I would have preferred a slightly lower draw. Loads of these are making their handicap debut, as you might expect, being a nursery. Watch it back at Chester. He actually started off in in uh, the Brocklesbury, this chap, and he ran miles below market expectations. They then took him to Bath on firm ground, and then he finally gets on soft ground. The pedigree suggests he'll love it. Everything screams six furlongs, and he peeled off the bend at Chester, and he was going so well, it took him every yard to get up. He's half brother to a six furlong winner. Ryan Moore's on. They've got a decent record. Andrew Boarding. It, it, it all looks in play for me. Tom, a uh, really hard race. I'd just stick with the draws and go low. I think because I think they're going to go up the far side, or that's what that's what I seemed like in the last race yesterday. So the two I liked were Flag of St George, who's with Jane Chapel Hyam from Stall Two. U.S. Navy Flag was the sire of the nursery winner yesterday, so I don't think the ground will be an issue for him. And the other one was Charlie Braveheart, Charlie Johnson's uh, specific times. Yeah. Hasn't had a great week so far, has he? But uh, Why are you smiling? Because <laughs> I, back you've two, I back two horses in that race, and guess what they are? Uh, those Same as Tom. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what? I said to Kills yesterday, a friend of mine who watched the show called Danny said, did Kills look a little bit annoyed with life yesterday? And you said, I'm a grumpy bugger sometimes. <laughs> no, All you've done is smile. No, I'm not, no, I'm not grumpy. I just look miserable because I haven't got my mouth open. That's not, <laughs> It's not my fault. Until he has five winners at Goodwin, five um, bottles of plunk. Um, um, it's, look, look, lovely to see you smiling, Kills. Uh, all right, then the two horses yeah. as well, yeah? Right. Uh, yeah, well, it's a specific times, just one really easy at York last time, from the front, so we'd like to be the first on the fresh ground. Uh, and, you know, we'll probably take some bigger. I think the Johnsons have won this race a couple of times as well, haven't they? Mm, she's yeah. likely to get on with it. I think she's sort of a blue point, and, uh, but the damn side. And Flag of St George is, oh, is obviously three pound well in for that second exactly. Windsor last week. Yeah, I, I just uh, wonder whether this and might and be does like a bit of e just does like a bit of ease in the ground. Mm. I don't worry about horses coming back quickly over six furlongs. I mean, you know, it's a, it, it's oh, it's they're two year olds. I, I just can't get it out of my mind. One minute they run, run well, one minute they look a bit weak. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Well, the only time he hasn't run well was in the Coventry. I think we can forgive him that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. In, in Australia, they're running only two, two days. I must admit, it, 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 Richard Kingsley's had a winner as well, and I, I, I can see that. No love for Starlust then, just on the draw? 
No, plenty. he's a good horse, isn't he? Good, yeah. very good claimer coming, but it's just, you know. It's, it's 12 pound, isn't it? It's, it's 12, 12, 12 pound, 12, drawn, drawn 12. And he's seven no, to two, no. three to one or whatever he is, you know. Yeah, you know, he mm. could easily be on the wrong side of the track. Yeah, all right, okay. Yeah, Connor Plans could have a good day, couldn't he? What about the Queen's runner? So the rank's got four months soft. Another race horse. Yeah, that would be the King, by the way. Did I say the Queen? <laughs> yes. <laughs> you could all, you could say the Queen's horse is the King. Yeah, the Queen. Deals. Yeah, come in. She's a coming back. Oh, here. Right, fair enough. <laughs> my eye, the sofa on the right. Don't worry, I'll get you back, Willie. Absolutely yeah. fine. Uh, right, okay. What about Richard Vies? Before we go on, we've got a great daughter of uh, Dark Angel. Uh, Mauna Loa. Yeah, Did well, I hear you mention that this morning? Uh, right, no, no, it's right 15. on the wing, isn't it? it right on the wing. Yeah, oh, you know what's going to happen here. Going. In fact, Ray's got another one, Roop, Roop as well. Uh, Roger Varian's also in the King Power Colours absolutely took apart the nursery, didn't it? So <coughs> no, I imagine they've been looking towards this meeting. Rob Ormish drew a winner. All right, that's the nursery. Let's get the tips out of the way then. Uh, yeah, uh, specific times and flag of St. George. I'll back them both, I think. Dutch them. All right, yeah. for Tom. I already have. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah. All right, I think Loaded Gun's got a massive chance despite the draw. Tank, Loaded Gun for me. All right, on the right sofa over here, that's what we like. Okay, final race of the day coming up. We've got plenty of time to go through this for you. Uh, this has been won by some rather good horses down the years. So Michael Stout won it with a certain poet's word in the last 10 years. We all know what he went to do at Group 1 level. Could not our king repeat the feat to Brett Williams. Well, yeah, in the same colours as well. Of a, poet, of a poet's urge. Yeah, nine to two joint favourites here. Um, Nadia King and Maso Basti both at nine, nine to two. The, probably the strongest of that of that, of that two would be the um, the James Fanshawe horse, who's was sort of around five and a half to one. So there has been quite quite strong support for that. Uh, apart from that, very very quiet betting market. We are paying four places each way, so there's an, another incentive to get involved. Danced in Paris for Ian Williams has got a bit of a squeak. I ran well at Sandown last week. Um, and second, 16 to 1, wouldn't be a bad price each way for that one. A lovely big horse, son of Olympic Glory, and we know Olympic Glory loved, mm. loved the soft ground. Yeah, okay, all right, interesting. Um, another tip from the Williams show. Kills has come to you on this one, and this is your two pointer. Yeah, I'm a real fan of, uh, I'm a real fan of balanced play uh, for Rose Beckett. I have been following because he, he ran a blinder first time out this season in a race at Salisbury, where over seven furlongs, given considering he's bred for so much further. And there were two promising horses either side of him, uh, who both won, uh, both won next time. Uh, and I thought, I've got to keep an eye on this horse. And he ran in the Torito race at Epsom. Uh, and I, I backed him that day. And I was actually surprised because he'd gone up three furlongs and he got outpaced mm. before running on again. Uh, but last time they decided they were going to make the run, run in with him at Chester. Uh, and I thought he won quite comfortably. Uh, and of course, I like the fact that you can, if you can zip round Chester, you're not going to have many problems with, with, good, uh, with Goodwood. Uh, and I just want, you know, I am worried about the draw in stall th 13, but I am, because he's a forward goer, mm. if he can get there easy and easily enough. Uh, well, this is the unpronounceable Philly ride, isn't it? Who was third on, on, on Wednesday, Ilan Majura or whatever yeah. he marks us down for mm. on our spans. It, it yeah. was almost the same yeah. draw. You're going to have to yeah, ride the same thing. The thing is, it's, yeah, a it's a different it's track it's as well, isn't it, the Amarland 3? You yeah, sort of go up the back, got, they go around the far got side. You more of a chance. Yeah. Okay. You, do have, you, you do have more of a chance. So, I'm hoping, uh, I'm hoping he can get there. He's a half brother to Khalidi, who ran three times at Goodwood, won the first two, finished second to Crystal Ocean in the Gordon Stakes. So I'm hoping he takes after him oh, and takes yeah. him the track yeah. as well. Was he trained mm. oh, I can't remember Khalidi, that. I remember him, yeah. There's someone out there screaming at the telly right now. I must admit, I thought I was going to tip him. Mm. And I looked at the Chester run, and he did definitely win with something in hand. And these race horses are so resolute, aren't they? They just yeah. keep on galloping yeah. and gabbling, and they can stretch yeah. out. It was more the run style in this race that slightly worried me. I just wondered whether something might come and pick it up. Intricacy's form of his win last time was at Sandown was has worked out really, really well. Mm. I thought Loyal Touch might be a player here. I'm, I hope you're not listening, Frank. I'm not sure Frankie's the right ride for this. He needs a lot of stoke in this chat. Mm. And, uh, 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 but he definitely wants to trip. There's loads of soft ground in his pedigree. I spoke to Charlie Johnson when we were doing one of these shows earlier in the year, and he got the feeling that it, after that, London Gold Cup form. He thought there was a better performance coming. It didn't happen last time. He's up in trick. He liked the ground. But I, I, I'm going to get my Matty Williams hat on again here. And I think Nada King back on soft ground is the play. I think he's got. A, I think that is the key with him. I'm a tad disappointed with him at Salisbury. I thought he was going to go and win that Whitbury Cup or whatever it's called. And um, it's, it's always a good race. He's got a good draw. Ryan Moore's on. I think this. I think Ryan will carry the punters home in the last. Good luck. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> I hate horses by Camelot.
Well, Oshie Murphy <laughs> dug me out about this on the first day. Do you remember? Don't he like was right him. as well, by the way. But it was all to dream, actually, Oshie, if you're watching. It was, it, he went well. He said they were soft. Well, it's not. Yeah, they're, just not they're just yeah, not yeah. that consistent. We, we nearly got through the whole show without getting our bloodstock caps on. Well, I just like it. I think it's an interesting fact, an interesting part of the puzzle, especially when the ground gets soft. Mm. And uh, I don't know. I don't know about him myself. So you're not backing true legend either, then? No, I'm not making true legend either. I, I like, funnily enough, I like Lope de Vega, funnily enough. Balance <laughs> play, you're yeah, Lope de Vega. Yeah, well on soft, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I also thought the Ulysses horse of Mick Shannon's, sorry, Mick Shannon's, Jack Shannon's, uh, Rathgar. Yeah. He has a very good record in these sort of races, uh, uh, the Shannon's always used to. And I just thought his first two runs of the season were really good, and they both make him out to be a well handicapped horse. He's not been quite the same since. But back on soft ground, stall one. I thought he might outrun his price. So uh, I like to balance play and I'll have a few quid on Rathgar as well. I think the chess piece form at York is pretty solid. Yeah, absolutely. Well, what about Mazo Basti? Because this is definitely the gamble of the race. It was double figures yesterday. It's James Fanshawe. Watched back the Newcastle one. Didn't scream to me. I guess it's a soft ground angle, is it, Kills? Uh, yeah, it could, well, it could well be, couldn't it? But, you know, James Fanshawe, very shrewd. Very shrewd outfit when it comes to handicaps. Yes. I'll be mostly associated, him, I suppose, with a straight course at Ascot. But I mean, he's, you know, he's a good trainer, and you know, take take notice of the money sometimes. Mm -hmm. uh, have a have a close look at him, I'd say. Yeah, all right, wide open then at the last. Uh, I am going to get the tips out of the way. I think Canada <coughs> King has got a right chance, but I'll be back in loyal touch as well to uh, to accompany him. Paul Keeney? No, I like balance play. I'm just convinced he's going to continue improving, uh, and we'll have a little bit up his sleeve. You could probably say one or two of these will also have a little bit up their sleeve. It's a, it looks a decent handicap to close a yeah. card with. Yeah, for sure. Tom? Uh, yeah, balance play would definitely be on the short list. I like Rathgar a bit. Only one is two-year-old maiden here as well, so on softish ground, so I thought he'll go well. Take a price. Brett? Loyal touch. Oh, you like him as well? Yeah, I just, the first run since being guarded might just help him out a little bit. Yeah, definitely. I, I definitely think he's a play. They are your... Uh, Tips at the bottom then. Who's the top? Yeah, Rathgar on top for top. All right then. That brings us to the business end of the show. I hope you've been having fun. We'll be back with you, of course, tomorrow morning on the Uni Bet Morning Dash with the Racing Post. 8.30, get up. And we'll be expecting downpours tomorrow, Kills, aren't we, again? Oh, it's going to absolutely hammer down. It can't be worse than Wednesday. It's going to be worse than Wednesday. Oh. It is worse than Wednesday on some weather sites, put it that way. Good grief. Uh, and a lot of it is going to arrive <laughs> early as well, so... So, yeah, it's going to be an absolute bog on Saturday. We haven't done charity bets yet. No, we? we're getting no. to that. We're oh, getting okay. to that. Don't worry. Oh, no, so, while on your, so while I'm telling you I'm going to have a winner now, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, don't know, I, I don't think I've ever had a charity bet winner. <laughs> well, I've well, had like every other winner, but the I've charity bet one. one. <laughs> don't take this the wrong way, Racing Welfare, but I hope he doesn't, because I wonder if we might have gone in the same race. Let's get him out of the way and get him up on the screen, please, Sam Hart, if you don't mind. What are we looking at as they come up? There we go. Oh, same as oh, me. Kills. Oh, you're all right. We're all right. In that case, I do have yeah, a Yeah, I mean, I did have two points on balance play, but I was regretting not having more on tackle. A bit like a Ross Golin. Because I really fancy it. Yeah, all right. Okay, so there they are. £25 from Unibet if they win. And some of them have sunk. I know, Brett. Uh, Maybe we so got the first one up the first day. I don't know. Yeah, we did. That's yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, Law of the Sea, tackle Bay, two times. And when we went doubled up on that floor of Bermuda, that worked. So... Tackle by massive chance in the golden mile for the lads, and I think Nada King will get you over the line with Ryan Moore in Moore and Stout. We trust. Uh, the treble's on, boys, as well, isn't it? Yeah, treble's on, oh, definitely. Yeah, You'd have thought so. I might, you know, Great stuff. I might even have it. I you might even do it. <laughs> yeah, come on, let's <laughs> do it. Absolutely. What, what, what would it, what, what I don't it know what it's it, it was around about 11 to 4. I think with some of Brett's prizes, I, I, I was trying to work it out in my head. I, I think right. probably. I'm not sure I'm doing I'm not sure I want to do it now. I'm not sure I want to do it now. Roughly no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I just warn you. Me. I just warn you that whenever I back something at a short price, it loses. Yeah, well, okay. That's why, right. I, that's why I try not to do, do it. it. Exactly. The yin and the yang from Kills. Look, it's been an absolute pleasure having down with us this week. I, no problem. I mean that. It's cool to do this in the morning, isn't it? We have a bit of a laugh. It's Tom, good it's fun. Been, it's, it's, been, it's good fun. It's been brilliant. Thanks for coming along. Brett, you're back tomorrow. Am I? You certainly <laughs> are. Okay. You certainly are. I'm not sure that shirt will be when we walk up, but, uh, <laughs> All the socks and trainers. Yeah. Yeah. And, and Kills, yeah, we'll of course see you It'll for the, the final pouring leg. rain. You'll be yeah. driving in yeah, tomorrow in the pouring yeah. rain. Yeah. We'll be here. Yeah, all right. Okay. Yeah, go and, if you see the chaps on course today, do go and say hello. This has been the Morning Dash from us all here at the Racing Post and Unibet. Have a great Friday.